Smile. Good afternoon, everybody. Dr. Michael Jacobs here at the Fertility and IVF Center in Miami with our afternoon Monday chat. I apologize uh, for the delay, but obviously we had to finish some patient procedures. So thank you for waiting. Uh, today's topic is how do I know if my eggs are any good? And as most people realize that in order to get pregnant and have a healthy baby, we need three things to make this happen. We need a source of eggs, a source of sperm, and a uterus to be able to have an embryo and plant in. And this is where the pregnancy occurs on its own, uh, where obviously by relation, sperm is deposited in the upper vagina, finds its way to the eggs, fertilizes the eggs, the tube transports the embryo back to the uterus and the embryo sticks. Or it can happen with IVF where the eggs and sperm are mixed together in a dish to create a fertilized egg, otherwise known as an embryo, and then that embryo transferred uh, into the uterus. So, you know, everybody who's, who's of reproductive age is always curious, and do I make good eggs? Am I too old? Am I too, you know, is there any issues that I should know about? And so, you know, in, in a very short manner, there's a couple of different things that we can do to try and get an answer to that question, which is often very reassuring for some people and uh, sometimes frustrating for others. So the first thing we do to ask, to, to assess what the potential quality of the eggs is, because you can't go get the eggs. I mean, that, that would be the ideal way is we get the eggs, we do IVF on them, we see if they're mature eggs and whether they fertilize and develop into nice, healthy embryos but that's a treatment plan. So the question is from a diagnostic standpoint, what can we do to, to answer this question? Do I make good eggs? Do, are my eggs too old or even at a young age, uh, are they acting like an older person? So there are a couple ways we address this. The first way thing we do is we look at your birth date and ask you how old you are. And as you know, the older you are, the more mature you are, but the less number of eggs you have in the ovary and the less good quality eggs there are. But there are some 41 year olds that have terrific ovaries and will respond very sensitively to medications. And there are other 28 year olds that despite high doses of fertility drugs will be very resistant. So there are some biologic markers that we can use to give us a little better idea other than just age alone uh, to assess things. And, it, you know, if you look at a group of patients that are 30 years old, most of those patients are going to have better ovarian reserve than, let's say, a group of 40 year olds, where you may find some people being very good and other people being not so good. So the biologic markers that we can use are some hormone tests and the ones that our center particularly likes using. The first one is called anti-malarian hormone or AMH level. The benefit of AMH is that it's not really cycle day specific, so it can be done at the time of other blood tests. It doesn't have to be at a specific point of your cycle. And it seems to be the most sensitive of the uh, hormone tests to correlate with ovarian reserve. And in general, uh, a good ovarian reserve is associated with an AMH level of a normal value in, in somebody, let's say in their mid thirties would be one and a half to two. Uh, values under one are usually not a good sign at any age. They're associated with diminished ovarian reserve uh, or minimal response to fertility drugs, less number of eggs, less good quality eggs. Doesn't mean you can't have a baby. Doesn't mean you, can, you have to use a donor egg. It just means that from a predictive standpoint, we're going to have more trouble getting lots of eggs if we're stimulating for IVF and potentially in women over 35 with low AMH, you're going to have a higher incidence of what are called aneuploid embryos. So even though you have a normal egg and a normal sperm, when they get together, the embryos aren't so normal. So one is age, two is AMH level. Third is uh, on cycle day two, three or four, we can look at the ovary on ultrasound and measure the little black lakes in the ovary called antral follicles. And these are the, where the eggs live basically. And every month there's a group of eggs that are potentially available for ovulation. And as you know, in, in the human species, usually only one or occasionally two will ovulate and you get a singleton birth or a multiple birth, like a twin pregnancy. Uh, whereas, you know, in a, in a 
a dog, for instance, you can have a litter of you know, eight or 10 puppies and that's from eight or 10 eggs ovulating. So they're not identical where one egg split into eight different embryos basically, but you had multiple eggs ovulate. So in human, the, the idea is usually one egg ovulates, occasionally two. And uh, if you measure these antral follicles, it should be done on the second, third or fourth day of this menstrual cycle, counting the first day of flow as day one. And a good antral follicle count is five to 10 per side. So, you know, I, again, AMH, uh, a value of over two is good. A value less than one is very poor. Uh, antral follicle count, we like to see at least 10 antral follicles in total between both ovaries. Uh, you know, so 10 to 20, total is a nice number to have. When the values are in single digits, then we're very concerned with less response to medication. And, you know, if you've got 30 or 40, then we have sort of a polycystic ovary, and then we worry about over-response to medications. Uh, the uh, other way is on the third day of the cycle is to measure FSH and estradiol. And in contrast to an AMH level where a higher value is better than a lower value with FSH, a higher value associated with a normal estrogen level is usually not a good sign. So what's happening there is that the ovary is not working well and the pituitary gland is producing more FSH in response to that to try and kind of kick the ovary in the butt to get it to respond better. So if, you know, it's not a complicated subject, it just comes down to looking at these various things and putting them all together. And then most commonly, they will all sort of go in the same direction. Occasionally you might get a mixed message. You might get somebody with a, a normal actual follicle count, but their AMH is a little bit low or somebody who's uh, younger with lower antral follicles, but normal FSH. But in general, uh, you know, the key things, nice and simple, age, younger is better than older at any age, basically. The second is AMH level, done any time of the cycle, anti-malarian hormone value. Between two and five is a terrific value. You know, most patients are gonna have values between two and four. Uh, once you get above five, you have ovaries that are often associated with polycystic ovaries and uh, uh, that's good because there's lots of eggs there, but creates other issues for us. Uh, the third, the second hormone test, which is the third test, is the FSH and estrogen level. You want an FSH ideally under 10 in women that are in their late 30s, early 40s. You know, it sometimes it gets into the, the 12 to 15 range. When FSH is above 16, uh, it's it's rare for us to be really successful with that group, particularly if their AMHs are under one and their antral follicle counts uh, are you know under five and um, and so forth. And the last is the antral follicle count and ovarian. You can also measure ovarian volume at that time, and they usually go together. Patients with less antral follicles have less ovarian size to it, basically, and and so forth. So you know, one is a verbal question. How old are you? The next two are blood tests, AMH, any day of the cycle. Uh, a value of you know two to five is ideal. A value less than one is concerning. FSH and estrogen on cycle day two, three, or four. Ideally, a value under 10, under 12 is reasonable. Once it gets up into the teens, it's uh, it, it's not a good sign. And lastly, antral follicle count which is ultrasound that's done on the second, third, or fourth day of the cycle. And we'd like to see at least a total of uh, five to 10 antral follicles per side. So those are the key four things. That gives you an idea of, is your overreacting age appropriate? Uh, it doesn't, no matter what the value is, it doesn't mean you will or won't have a child because obviously there are other factors, condition of the uterus, condition of the sperm, uh, other parts of medical history and so forth. But the simple answer to the question that most people have of how do I know if my eggs are any good, it's really addressing those four topics, age, AMH, FSH and estrogen, and antral follicle count.
So if you have any questions, please ask us. If you're unsure how to interpret things, please ask your doctor or us. We're happy to go over it with you. Uh, the more complicated question is, what do you do now that you know that information? Um, and uh, uh, so forth. The question was whether growth hormone can help with egg quality. Uh, the studies mostly show it doesn't. There was a, a period a bunch of years ago in older women where uh, uh, growth hormone was added to stimulation protocols and IVF, but it really didn't significantly make a difference. It's expensive, it doesn't work consistently, so we don't use that anymore. Uh, we have a thank you for a set of twins from our team in the office, so you're more than welcome, and we appreciate those comments and love to hear back and uh, you know send us some photos every once in a while so we can see these kids grow up. It makes us feel great. Uh, some other questions that have come up, what if uh, we get eggs on IVF, but they're not progressing through the blastocyst stage? Uh, the reason is why aren't they? Is it an egg problem or a sperm problem or a combination of the two? Uh, and that you'll need to discuss with your individual physician, basically. And what you do about it depends on what the f answer to that question is. But usually the reason that embryos don't continue to get to a blastocyst stage, uh, most common reason is that they're not normal embryos. And, you know, if you look at what's the natural fate of an, of an abnormal embryo, whether it occurs spontaneously uh, with a normal pregnancy or whether it occurs uh, in an IVF dish in the laboratory, uh, the most common reason for an embryo to stop developing is that it's genetically abnormal. It's nature's way of uh, cleansing itself, so to speak. You can have embryos that get to the blastocyst stage that still aren't normal. And that's somewhat age dependent. You know, women that are 35, about half their embryos are not going to be normal. Women that are 42, 75% are not going to be normal. And younger women, women under 30, 70% will be normal. So all these things do play a role. Question, what do I do if I went to a fertility clinic, but indecisive at this point, only done the hysterosuction of blood work, well, you need to have a full evaluation. If you're trying to get pregnant, you know, we need to know your ovarian reserve. You need to know that your uterus is normal and your tubes work. You need to know that you're ovulating. Uh, the latter you can often find out from just menstrual history and ovulation predictor kits and so forth. But the key really is if you're having trouble getting pregnant, see a fertility specialist. We recommend getting all the tests done at one time in one month, basically, so you have a full picture of what's going on rather than piecemealing over six months or a year. And that way we can devise a treatment plan that's going to most optimally result in a pregnancy in the shortest period of time, also associated, hopefully, with the least cost and intervention. So we try and uh, 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 get things going. Uh, in, in a cost-effective, individualized manner. Uh, what's good for one patient may not be good for another, uh, and so forth. Question of, do I have to do the whole process over? If you come to us as a patient and we haven't seen you previously, uh, we, you know, bring your records with you. Uh, I had a patient uh, today that had, uh, you know, everything done within the last four or five months, and uh, we don't have to repeat any of it. So we just have to go ahead and start treating her. So, you know, you don't have to necessarily have everything repeated if you had some preliminary testing done elsewhere, but bring the records with us. If there's anything in question or things that we're worried about that haven't been addressed, then we like to address those to, to make sure that we're not missing anything. You know, the key for us as fertility doctors is that we're trying to get the best outcome with every patient that we're treating. And in order to do that, we need to understand what the uh, cause of the couple not getting pregnant is so we can guide our treatment for the best possible outcome. Ovarian reserve, or the answer to the question, how do I know if my eggs are any good, is a basic part of those questions, basically. Uh, you know, the other questions, is the sperm okay? Is my uterus okay? Is my tube, are my tubes open? And obviously our topic today, do I make good quality eggs? So, uh, we wish everybody a great afternoon. Uh, I'll leave by just summarizing one more time. The key for 
ways of us trying to evaluate the answer to that key question of how do I know if my eggs are any good? One, age, uh, younger the better, older not necessarily too old. It's just a matter of, of whether your ovary is still going to produce good quality eggs. Second is AMH level. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, you have a good reserve of eggs in the ovary. FSH and estradiol level early in the cycle, day two, three, or four. And lastly, antral follicle count on day two, three, or four. All these things help us answer that question and help guide uh, both uh, what treatments are available, how you may respond to those treatments, and it also sets a tone of how quickly one might want to progress to uh, treatments that uh, uh, may be a little more elaborate, such as IVF, but are much more successful in certain situations. So that's today's topic. I thank everybody for tuning in, and I wish you all a nice, healthy, safe uh, Monday, and look forward to uh, seeing you in the office and working with you collectively to have a nice, healthy baby. So have a good day and take care.